Danny, say hello everybody. Love you all. Love you Sunset Bay. <laughs> There's little Danny. And here is, is Danny's mommy. I want to thank you, Sunset Bay, for all your care and support for us, your love and prayers. We really appreciate I can't come now, but I will be with you in, with my heart, my whole heart and everything. And mm. to the ladies, I want to thank you as well for the studies and book and encouragement words. And thank you so much. It's so important for us. And Thank you for your support in our family, in our ministry. I mean, we are together in this, and you are important for us. Thank you. Mm. God bless you. I love you, Daddy. <laughs> you love me or you love them? I love them. them. Yeah? You love everybody over there in Florida? <laughs> yeah? yeah. <laughs> Tell them, say like this then, then. Say, come and see me. Come and see me. Please. Please. We're waiting. We're waiting. For you. For you. Come down. Come down. We're ready. We're ready. It's time. It's time. Come on. Come on. We love you. I love you. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Help us. Help us. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Pare um pouco e pense Fugir não vai adiantar Pois ele é a salvação Welcome to my father's house This is the place that we call Graceland And I'm going to take you inside a little bit and show you But this is where we work in the restoration of X Street Boys. As you can see walking down here we, we plant beans and corn. We're in the planting season. We've just been planting these last couple of weeks. Macaxeira. We plant beans and corn and rice. We have bananas, 27 varieties of fruit, mango trees. A very typical scene. I'm walking here and I'm not a pro so let me show you what we have here. On the left we have the house where the guy who helps us take care of the land he lives here with his family. Next to it the house with the veranda is where some of our students from our school, our, our discipleship training school, people who are being trained to do to become missionaries with YWAM and hopefully become full-time staff members with us. This is where they are, I'll stop walking a little bit. The house on the right with the, with the garage, that's the house where pretty much everything functions right now here on the farm. And you can see the trees and over here our neighbors. A piece of land here is 500 meters long by 90 meters wide. And there in the distance, you can see the house that we've been building across this last year with our Volkswagen bus in front of it. And from here, it looks like it's pretty well incomplete, incomplete. But as we walk further down there, you'll see how much of it is done. And there's one of our boys, Emerson, coming out of the classroom at the moment. And we're going to walk down there and I'll show you a little bit more. No, this is not the tallest man in the world. This is Pedrinho, who helps us take care of the land. Up there on the roof, fixing something. Wave to us, Pedrinho. There he is. A little bit of the fruit of the land. These are cherries. Over here, this is where we plant our table vegetables. We're not in the planting season right now because we're in the rainy season. You wouldn't know it by looking at the sky. The sky is a beautiful blue color, but we are in the rainy season. And over here, we have bananas. And walk a little bit closer and show you one of the areas that we're developing, which is going to be something very successful in the future I believe in the restoration of the boys who take care of take care of animals and begin to work this area right here we are planning on turning into 
a metal workshop. Metal and wood for working in as much in the production of jewelry and fine art as also in welding and soldering for the boys to have a skill that they can learn here with us. And I'll present to you later the staff member who's equipped and trained, ready to, ready to teach. She's doing design classes with the boys at the moment, ready to prepare them for what we're going to do. We're gonna, we need to change the structure of this building. It used to be an old chicken coop. We're going to make it two times bigger, two times taller, and ready for work. It needs electricity, running water, and a good amount of injection of cash to get it working. Here under the banana trees is where we have some of our favorite friends, as you can see here sleeping, is two, three little piggies. They're out here in the wild while their mother is resting. We have three pigs, two females and one male. There's the mother of those three. And this area here that we're developing is our livestock area, which we never intend to become a fully working farm, but we intend to have Two, two horses, a cow, here's our male pig, he's the successful one. Yes, they are your kids. Over here, one of our little families, these, these pigs, they can go, the, the boys that live here, they can take two of these pigs home and give them to their families for them to take care and breed or eat or sell. It's one of the ways in which we help the kids to start to develop an interest in supporting their own families. We also eat the pigs, sorry to say that. And we breed them and in here in the back through these through these holes in the wall here we have 30 chickens that produce plenty of eggs for us there's some of them there moving away again so this is our livestock area right now the cows the cows and the horses are going to come a little bit later in the area that we separated as our corral here in front of us is the volleyball court sand of course because we're in Brazil and in front of it the soccer field once again, because we're in Brazil, there's the house that we're finishing building. It's going to have two other houses very similar right next to it. And moving around here, there's Mardonia. Waving to us, Mardonia's 17 years old. He's been living with us here for a year and a half. He's a great kid. And you'll enjoy listening to him speak a little bit later. And there behind him, coming down the road, they're on their break now from class is Emerson coming this way see if I can get a wave out of him too Emerson nope he's going through a very difficult moment for him I'll explain a little bit while I'm with you wiping away tears one of the reasons is because the class they're going through this morning is a class about the Father Heart of God, something that messes a lot with our boys. Here as I move away, start to see a little bit of the house we've been working in for the last two and a half years with a garden in front of it that Emerson takes care of. There's the house up there in the left hand corner is where Selma and, me, and I and Danny live. There's our house right there. I'll take you and show you a little bit of that. Here on the right is where the boys live. And there, believe it or not, on top of this roof, is Pedrinho again. Give us a wave, Pedrinho. He is just on top of every roof today. <laughs> Walking down the pathway to the house, you can see a little bit of where we live. Going to walk into the dining room. Here on the veranda in the front, we have our pool table, ping pong table. Well, we could use a new one. <laughs> but it still works. They can't beat me yet though. And here, doing a little bit of work here on one of our micro enterprises, producing greeting cards. And you'll be seeing these cards in front of you. If you haven't seen them already, we produce cards from paintings that the boys paint. See the painting of Palmino there. And you have bathrooms, paintings on the wall that you guys will be seeing in front of you. In the kitchen, Clege, our cook. Chico, oi, Clege. Oi, Peter. Oi, Clege. Oi. <laughs> Here's our industrial kitchen. Well prepared to keep these hungry tykes in order. Look at the state of that one. You think he eats? You can bet your life he eats. He eats more than any of you guys. 
This is the area where we call it our lounge. We have a TV here in the corner that they watch once in a while. We, we rent DVDs for them and try to keep them on the straight and narrow. Take care of TV in your lives. It's a dangerous tool. La Madon, me preguntando por qué. Oh, now I'm speaking the wrong language. He's asking me why I didn't bring him to get his notebook when I came back. It's because he was concentrating so hard that I forgot. Porque quando eu veio, você estava tão concentrado que eu pensei eu vou deixar. Esse é um. Diga oi aqui. Oi. Depois a gente conversa mais com a máquina. Moving over here, coming through another door. This is our classroom. Today we're not using our classroom because it's not big enough for all the people that are here. But you get an idea of the place we work in, some of the difficulties we have. Oh look, I focus straight on one of the difficulties. Rising damp, salt in the sand. We have, this building's been built for three years and we already need to rework it because it's falling apart. But God is good. This is a great room here. We have plenty of uh, opportunity to teach. And there, a scene from Guatemala, ambition. God is the creator of all ambition, and takes us where he wants us to go, in front of the classroom. Moving across here, in here there should be a staff member, I think Faith is in here. Yes, she is. Faith takes care of our accounts, works in, the, in our area of education. God bless her, she's English. There you go, say hi Faith. Hi. And behind her are a wall of creative ideas. And these are the boys that have lived here across this last couple of years. Let me see if I can focus a little bit more on them. Here is Cloud, the little boy that I said eats a lot. Let's see if I can focus on him a little bit more. This was in the first week when he came here. He was a very different boy. Paulo, he's here still. Ricardo's not. He's um, using and abusing drugs on the streets. He's 19 years old now. Emerson is the boy that I saw was coming down with tears in his eyes. Another very different boy from when he came. Thiago was the last boy to run away from here, together with Danielle. Two boys who I really believe God has his hand on their heart and their lives in restoration. This is Maradona, who just asked me why he didn't come and get his his notebook with him. And here is his Valba, who's in prison right now. Vadson, who's in prison. This is when Selma was pregnant with Danny three years ago. Here below, Wayne, who lives on the streets. I'll show you where he lives a little bit later when I take the camera down to the streets. Palmin's still here. Rogério is in prison. Plast is living with another family, doing well. Alfonso is not doing well at all. He's back on the streets. Cristiano is doing okay working with a bus company cleaning buses. Adriano traffics drugs. Traffics drugs and children on the streets of Fortaleza. Oh, Eduardo Victor just came out of prison. And Jorginho is very dear to our hearts and I believe God has his hand on Jorginho and is going to create an incredible story of restoration in this boy's life, but right now he's also back on the streets. And one more boy here somewhere. Tiago. I have no idea where Tiago is. Looking down to the garden. And looking out in the distance from the veranda in front of my house, and Selma's house. The soccer field. Very important place in the lives of a Brazilian. And there in the distance, the house that we're going to go take a look at that you guys have blessed us so much with. That is being used right now. And coming back around through the holes here, you can see what we loosely term a lake. Let's see if I can focus on it. Hard to see from here. I'll go and look through another window. Coming into our house, this is where we live. Selma and I. And here, as I say, is a hole in the ground we call a lake because the, ground, the land here floods in the rainy season. And right now it has about maybe eight inches of water in it. But within a month it will be completely full to two meters depth and will start to overflow and will flood our neighbor's land. We've tried to create a scene so that our, our land has been, has been raised higher 
by taking the sand out of the lake and we're still working hard. We planted 45 fruit trees this last year so in a year or so's time when you guys come down to make your first visit you will see big changes in this, in this land as has been over the last few years and there's the distance. In the distance, the horizon, those are the sand dunes and there is the beach. So when you come down you can go sand surfing down the sand dunes. They're in the distance. There's a, a little bit of our home. You guys have blessed us a lot with many little trinkets that we bought. Even this cover for the sofa right here, the love seat, was bought there in Florida, in Tampa. May or should I say Brandon? Here you go. A little bit of our home. A little bit of our the artwork from here in Brazil. And this was not painted by one of the boys, but we do like to show off. So here it is, the house you guys have been helping us build. And walking towards me, Selma. Say hi. Hi. There's my little Danny. There's Danny. Say hi, Danny. Hi. Love you. I love you. You the best. Give a kiss. Now over here, here's the house. I'm going to be pretty quiet now because we're teaching in here. Here, I'll zoom in a little bit. Here's a banner saying. Urban missions. This is an this is a eternal solution to an urban problem. Street kids. Have a look here, there's a window to one of the boys' bedrooms. Here's an idea on the wall. Some of you will know this name. There's a TV screen stuck on the wall. I got that idea from Jay Lippy years ago. He doesn't even know he taught me that. Here's a house. Veranda in the front. Two apartments for staff, volunteers, teams that come, volunteers that come to visit. It's where you guys will stay when you come. Here's the extension of the property. Our second house will be right there. And if God permits and we build a third, the third house will be right there. And so walking back over to the house. Two apartments downstairs and upstairs. And here is a part of the boys' residence, which will give a space for up to 20 boys when it's complete. And one day we'll get there. Here's something for, for you, Galen. This little house out there holds our building material. Pretty soon it's going to become our, our music room. Bathroom. 
Surfboard coming out of the wall. Second apartment, the roof. We're very close to finishing. The money that you guys just sent is going to take us a long way towards finishing. We're just going to have a few things left to do upstairs that won't be finished. We'll even have the painting done. Decided not to do the painting yet because we want to get used in the house and the painting's going to get in our way a little bit. Storeroom for the boys' bicycles. Looking through the kitchen. Going in through the back door, it's a laundry area, the boys wash their own clothes. This apartment upstairs has a veranda looking out over the whole land. The promised land. Graceland. Madon! <laughs> Some of Madon's painting that you can see. His work. We're recording this for ourselves because we expect you to buy all these paint paintings, so we need to remember them. Look at so well. Madonna, you're sitting on the ends. 17 years old. Who else is here? Emerson, hiding behind this picture. This is a very common scene with Emerson. He loves to hide. And he doesn't know what I'm talking about because he doesn't speak English. Emerson. Emerson. That's better. <laughs> I'm trying to find Paul's paintings here. Oh, there he is. Interesting to see how the styles of their paintings really reflect their character. Paolo has a very bold style in his painting and because Paolo is a very bold character. Say, hello America. You got, hello America. Hello America. 
Ah, there you go. And behind us here, I'm going to only film his t-shirt, because I said I'm not going to film his face, unless he takes his sunglasses off. Então eu estou só filmando a camisa dele, which says justice, a possible, mission possible in our city. But I'm not going to film his face until he takes his, until he takes his last Oh, they're off. There he is. Levanta a cabeça. Vira, vira essa pintura que está lá. Não, porque eu posso ver. A minha não it's not Emerson's painting, but yeah, this one is Pauline's. Pauline's going to be coming in the door any minute. I'm going to ask the boys some questions in just a minute. Get them to answer so you can get to know them a little bit. But this is interesting for you to see them in this way because you can see how Emerson's very nervous. And his faith, organizing paintings. Oh yeah, one of Claudio's paintings. Claudio has difficulty in believing. Volta. Não, fica aí, fica aí. Não, fica aí. Claudio has difficulty in believing that his pictures, that his paintings are, are beautiful, but this painting here is one of my favorites and really reflects the peace and calm that he has in his life. Claudio, what's one thing that you would like the people in Sunset Bay to know? Or how would you like them to think or or speak of you. Sharp, que eu gosto de pintar bijuteria. I love tocar bateria. I I really enjoy playing the drums and making jewelry. <laughs> Loves to paint. He spends hours and hours painting. Erro. Cool. Oh, I like to play basketball. So this is Paul. He just said he likes to play football, as he just saw soccer. And I'm just going to ask him how how you guys can pray for him. Como que eles podem orar por você? Orar pela minha vida com minhas fraquezas e Pray for my fam pray for my family and for my life, especially for my for respect. I want to ask the church to pray for me and for my family. And for my brothers. Pray for my family. And pray for me in the areas where I'm where I'm weak. No, there's an area in my life I'd like you to pray for is to be able to control my anger. What do you want to do in the future? So right now I'm not sure what I want to do in the future because the things I wanted to do, I've given up on those things. I, I, I wanted before, I wanted to be a professional soccer player. But my attitudes have shown me that I, that I don't have the capacity to be a soccer player. So I've decided that, to give up on that dream. I'll tell a little bit of my dream for Paolo. I believe Paolo's been given a, a, a ministry of public speaking. And God's working very hard right now, investing a lot in Paolo's character. And I believe there's a reason for that. Pray for Mardoni, pray for him, pray for his family like with the other boys. But notice something, there's something in his painting, painting that's really interesting. You notice that everything he draws, he draws, he paints, he paints in threes. 
Maybe you can think about what you think that might mean. But in every painting he does, he paints in threes. Just a thought. What? Go. I asked if there's anything he'd like to ask you guys. He said he'd like he'd like a family. Our house in the city centre. I look up and down the road here. Very typical Brazilian scene. Lots of people on the streets. The building that I hope one day God will give us right there. Oh yes! Bring it back inside. Here's the house. This is where one of the things I talked to you guys about is this area right here, which is a covered garage area. We want to turn it into a metal workshop. One of the two we're trying to set up. This house here is where we work with the kids from the community, from the streets, various situations. Looking back there, there's some of our team. Just let you meet them in a minute. What we call the blue room. Selma over there. Danny's sleeping on the sofa. This is the, our reception area. You see, we have lots of metal gates around the place. Our kitchen here in the city centre. Let it focus. Here's our city centre office. Everything is well structured as we can make it. We have lots of dreams for this place. Lots of people to minister to, lots of lives to be restored. Turn around our medical store. Walking down here, here's our, the room we use for the boys when they come off the streets. They come and stay in here for 10 days. Part of their test, do they really want it? This is Elizabeth. <laughs> She's, She's leading here our work in the city centre. This is Carol, staff member on our the subject training school. Philomena, <laughs> Laure, teaching in our school. Jean, that you've already seen. <laughs> Venice who works in our mobilization team and his wife Karen. They run our night school and a bunch of other stuff. We're walking back here, a little sink and a water fountain, bathroom for the kids that come off the streets and our discipleship programs. Here's our courtyard, foosball table, area where the kids wash their clothes, traditional Brazilian barbecue and a little bit of a garden. We want, we'd like to gain the property next door, which is at the moment a recycling center, which is against the law. And this here is our staff house, which we are about to begin, God willing, build a third story. We want to put a third floor on top of an open terrace so we can have, so we can host our mobilization team meetings and our, the, when we bring in the, the uh, churches to be involved in our program, the night school will be run from up there. Uh, our all nights of prayer, our seminars, our training center will all be based up here. And this area here will be the staircase going upstairs to the top. Here's the house where our city center staff live and volunteers and teams that come and stay. They work, they live and work in here. That place behind us there is an abandoned school. That's, and right now living in there are a bunch of street people. Here we have Legend Sue, if you volunteer, I think you've already seen her on the film. This is a lounge down here. We have a staff office. This is going to be turned into an apartment. We need a, an injection of cash to turn these eight rooms 
who we have in this house, into four apartments. This is the kitchen in the staff house at the moment, but this is going to turn into the kitchen for one of the apartments. And back here, we have two bathrooms back there. Here we've already turned two bedrooms into two small bedrooms. There's Avis. Faith won't let us in, but we're going to go and look in Avis's room. Faith is English, give her a cheer. Woohoo! God save the Queen! They've seen me once already! My broken computer screen here, me. Broken computer screen, if anybody feels like blessing somebody, there's something needs a blessing. That is not, that is not a, a spider on the screen, that is a broken computer that screen. That is a screen as of the second week. <laughs> yeah, we try to make it, we try to make life home. So here is home. And there, looks look through the keyhole. Nope, can't do it. There it is, one more. <laughs> That's all we're given a chance to do. Going up the stairs. We have four more rooms up here. This room here is used by teams and volunteers when they come, as is this room here. But we're in the process of making our plans for these rooms to be turned into one apartment. As this one is already being turned into this is Karen and Benice's home which we're in the process of turning into an apartment. One of the difficulties we have is that, look, there's the sink, the wash basin, and no water. But that's what we're hoping to fix across these next six months or so, God willing. And there you go. So, looking back down here. This is a great place. This is a gift from God. There's a great story behind this house too. And in Brazil, we always sing and dance. Oh look! How amazing! Sunset Bay mud being used by elves. And we're a few short, by the way, guys. Let me see if I can get in the shot too. Don't know if this is going to be possible. There we are, we made it. There's the three of us. To give my wife a kiss. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everything you do for us. We love you. Bye. Bye.